Ayo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Potter with the Grandmaster Glass YouTube channel. Welcome to episode 11 of the Glass Market Watch series. Here we're going to be talking about everything glass, whether you're a glass artist or just someone who loves art. I'm going to try to pull together things that I feel are worth talking about in the glass community, or maybe just some art that you might have missed. Before we start, please consider giving this video a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing, as well as smash that subscribe button and help grow this channel together. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Up first, we have got Bertoni Glass. And so speaking of evolution, seeing this guy's birds transfer and evolve from one style to another, keeping the theme though of the birds is super, super cool. Uh, it just keeps him grounded, but then always transferring and transforming and sculpting into different birds is super, super cool, not sticking to just one thing. And this is his classic kind of bird looking style, but then it also has a like pelican beak which I haven't seen a lot of these birds from him, so I think it's really, really cool. Mismatched toes, uh, claws at the bottom. I find that super, super interesting. Uh, so the, the, the whole bird kind of starts to tell a story when you look at it. You're like, why is his toes different colors? What color is his body? You know, what kind of bird is this? Uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a really, really cool piece. And just seeing him transfer from one style to another on all of his birds is just super, super cool. For Tony Glass. Up next, we've got Chaka glass. So this one is a two shot. Uh, I've got up close of the attachment and then the piece in his hand. Man, what a cool, cool aesthetic piece. The textural feel, just having that classic mini tube, but then having it all faceted and touched up and iced out like that is on another level. The tiny bit of transparency in the neck at the base where the can and the neck attach such a nice touch just to be able to see how much smoke you've got going through there as well as a detachable down stem. I really like that for ease of clean, things like that. And then, of course, you've got his classic uh, ch uh, Chaka Millies. And I don't know, did I say Chaka Glass at the beginning? This is Chaka Glass if I did not say it at the beginning. Uh, and, yeah, just just the aesthetics and the 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 form factor and how it fits in his palm – very, very sick piece. I like how the, the neck actually gets wider as it gets closer to the mouthpiece. Just the uh, shaping of the piece is very thought out and very, very cool. Chaka glass. Up next, we've got a heavy, heavy hitter. I thought I'd just include this uh, in case you missed it. Coil and elbow going down on a collab. Centaur monkey whole attitude. You know, just hitting the forest vibes with the backdrop. Very, very cool piece. Brown is not a very common color. Uh, I believe I've never even used it. I would believe it's a, I believe it's a super, super difficult color to use. Cadmium based colors uh, boil and they just bubble and they're super, super hard to keep clean. Uh, so yeah, that that in itself, just using that color is shows a lot of a lot of talent and a lot of execution. And just the overall collaboration with the the centaur body hit at the waist so it's just like a very even between elbow and coil super super cool piece and okay so this is somebody that is new to me this is diligent glass and i just thought these were such a cool idea when you see something that's not common and executed very well it just stands out and just the the texture and the color just the kind of sandy wooden handles and then it's got the the metal part. It's kind of that bluish silver fumed. And then the actual tips of the brush. I can't say that I've seen many or at all of like paint brushes like this. So what a cool way to apply glass and have it be, be sculptural and have it look like an object. And uh, very, very cool. I'm glad I found this new artist, new to me, hopefully new to you as well. So diligent glass, being very diligent with the ideas. Ah... So this is Dust Storm. Dust Storm, if you don't know, king of the UV, always applying it, prepping it, making it. So to see him apply his all of his UV work into a tube like this, hitting the mini tube vibes on this episode as well. He's got his attachment on the side, fixed down stem, worked down stem as well. And yeah, just the overall aesthetics, getting UV to stand out next to each other is... I think it's very difficult, and so if you start to notice in between each color, especially around the middle of the neck, there's black and other colors dividing it up. 
So you start to not have each UV color get mudded. You know, when you add too many colors, it starts to get muddy. Same deal with UV. You got to have something to separate each color or it just won't stand out as well. Uh, and so executing that in a piece like that, super, super cool to see. Wrapped up in the Illuminati, that hype, hype. Yeah, dust storm all over the place. Okay, so this one, May the 4th just happened the other day, so I felt like this was a cool uh, submission to add as well. This is Fatal Facets. And so you don't realize at first, this is like a carved, faceted, he does lots of like, uh, like tooling on the glass. And so he creates these marbles, and then he's able to tool out different shapes, and these are the shape of a Death Star. And then a Sam blasted Star Wars logo. And I just thought those were so, so cool. What a cool idea. He's got an opal inlaid in the middle of the Death Star uh, for the cannon. And baby little, uh, little baby Yoda stands at the bottom. Super, super cool. This is somebody as well that's new to me that I've just now started following. And uh, hopefully new to you if you don't already follow. And yeah, just the fatal facets being fatal with the execution on these. Up next... Okay, so Goliath, he has been absolutely crushing it. Just his overall uh, work ethic and his transparency and how uh, he approaches his social media and his business. I really, really love seeing Goliath's work and just seeing him on the daily, whether it's on the lives or his ha posts. Super, super, super cool guy. A uh, lot, of, lot of stuff you could benefit from him and following him if you don't already. And, uh, yeah, just seeing him crush out continuously right now on the grind. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. Goliath Glass, definitely go check him out. Up next. So this is some sick Millie work. This is from Ian Michael Glass Art. And he did this uh, custom Millie for Key Gla Key's Glass. And so I thought that was super, super cool. Key's, he's a Millie artist, and he applies big... Uh, I would say like scenes almost he, he applies a bunch of different millies into marbles in different ways And he actually had this millie artist make him these millies so he could use so I just the whole Ecosystem and everything is super super cool and the fact that it's over 9,000 Seeing that sick work from him Ian Michael glass all of the all of the millies that he creates uh, Super super fun work right there up next, we have got Juju Glass, the execution, and how clean that lightning bolt is in the center of her pendant. The dot stacking centered by that lightning just, boom, hits so hard. The style of her bales are also very unique, so you start to almost recognize it's like a, a signature in a way that you know, oh, that's a Juju dot stack pendant. And that's super, super cool to see. The thought process in the color patterning Pat patterning pattern and uh yeah just a great little pocket piece right there juju glass and we've got another millie artist here millie malachi and uh yeah just just a fistful of the simpsons uh auto man and auto man yeah and uh just just a couple episodes ago we featured the simpsons bus and so i thought it was a cool tie-in to include a simpsons character like this they could have used some of these millies on that bus for sure but, uh, yeah, it's such a cool Millie. It's very clean. Uh, just the execution and how clean that Millie is, super, super cool. I think he had these available for sale as well. Uh, so super, super clean Millie work right there. Up next, we've got... Okay, somebody else who is new to me. Miyagi Glass and uh, Miyagi G. And they make bottles. So, like, little little containers for your Terp, terp Pearls... And yeah, clearly they got the stickers in the background. Somebody who's new to me and that I've never followed before and just seeing the grind and the execution in their bottle work, super, super inspiring, super cool to see. And just having like, you could get a bottle from anywhere, but to know that you've got a handmade little sealed bottle, that, that's why we love glass. That's why we love art. And uh, just the dedication that somebody puts in and how far you can stretch glass and how many ways it can be applied no matter how simple or how complicated glass always has its value and has its place in life and just being able to make these little bottles to be able to keep things in is such a cool cute little idea and they're crushing it so miyagi g miyagi glass up next we've got okay so this is a pocket shredder from subliminal glass 
and I just thought it was too cute not to show. The style is not very common. The recycler with the gill uh, almost kind of like body down stem backwards. It stretch. I believe it's stretching down. Uh, it, the down stem goes down and stretches and pops up here. And then the water travels back down. I'm not even too sure on the function. Uh, but overall, super, super cool piece. Pocket piece. You could literally just cap that, shove it in the pocket, put a little cork in it, keep the water in it. And, yeah, just be in the forest, ready to go. So, yeah, subliminal glass. Ah, Tammy fucking baller. So this is a collab with Slugworth. Uh, I believe they made the body, and Tammy made all of the sculptural attachments. And, obviously, it's an Ace Ventura piece. And having all the characters, just to tie in his smirk, how much detail in it there is in this piece. And... What an awesome person. If you don't know Tammy Baller, great personality, such an awesome artist, and killing a master of the trade, clearly. So, uh, yeah, Tammy Baller and Slugworth collab. And, okay, so we are nearing the last piece. So I felt like this would be a, a really good one, save for last, because they're not always winners. And life is a struggle, no matter what you do, and sometimes not everything is a winner. He was going in on this and if i didn't say this is z shore glass he was going in on that dot work and you don't you can't tell from the picture that is dot not a drawing not a milli dots I, I don't even know how many thousands and thousands of dots and it cracked Probably when he was almost done with it, it looks like the whole image is almost there. And anybody, you can just feel, you know how much time and effort it would take to get to that point and have it crack on you. If I could zoom in, I could show you, but this is an insanely detailed piece. And what what an honor it is to even be experienced to see this, you know, to, to know people are making next level art like this and putting in that time and dedication i mean you got to be dialed in precision z shore glass i felt like you know just ending it on a positive you know one of those perspective moments and to see that broken piece he didn't fix it he made a whole nother one so i just thought that was something of value to show you guys uh i really hope you enjoyed this episode to uh, move through these, uh, I want to keep you guys entertained as well. Congratulations if you made it to the end. Uh, yeah, and just having this glass blower's perspective with the consumer perspective. Like I like to buy glass. I I it's like I want to be able to be transparent with you guys and give y'all just honest feedback on what I see in the glass community. Uh, and I always want to I want to remain positive. It has no place if it's going to be negative. Uh, because it's art, you know, it's not, it's not mathematics, it's not right or wrong. Uh, and so I never want to nitpick things that I don't like because something I might not like, you might love. And so just being able to have that perspective with you guys, knowing that I am a glass artist and that I might know how something could be made or how hard it would be, but also knowing that I'm a consumer and a, and a buyer and a customer and I like to talk. And this, I, I'm just, I don't own you know, any of these artists, I just watch them on Instagram or I follow them on socials. So it's not something that I'm getting anything out of this. I just want to share this with you guys. And I, I hope that translates. I eventually want to get sponsors for the show. I want to do fun things, but this whole glass market watch, I, I really want it to be organic and just my opinions. And I want you guys to trust and value them and have this, have this be a place that we can actually talk and, it, and have it provide a value to you guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to do these market watches. Uh, I'm also going to try to start vlogging and just trying to bring you guys into my daily kind of life, what I'm doing when I'm making art. And, uh, yeah, keep these weekly uh, market watches going. So if, you'd li if you like this video, let's do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, consider giving it a thumbs up if you liked what I uh, put together on this episode. Smash that subscribe button so we can continue to grow. We're over 300 followers, subscribers, and I'm very thankful for that. A year ago, I was at 20. So that's super, super cool to see it grow. 
And uh, yeah, just remember guys, never stop evolving.